Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. Um, a lot of people ask, how do you set a combine and how do you know how good you're doing? Great question. Let's do it. Uh, so I pulled into the field, I did the opening round just to get a spot for the buggy and the wagons to get parked um, and kind of see what the grain tank looks like. The sample in the tank uh, can tell us a lot. There, you know, we got a cleaning system and a separating system. If the grain tank has a bunch of crap in it, we need to clean it better. Uh, if we're getting kernels on the ground because we're trying to clean too good, then we need to clean less. Uh, same thing with the thrashing, and so let's let's give it a quick rundown, and we'll go from here. So the first thing I like to do is I get a chunk of cob, and then I go through the inspection hole and see how that fits in between the concave and the rasp bar. You can see the rasp bar is the metal to the right, and the concave is the metal to the left. And it fits in there pretty snug, but we might have to close it down just a whisker more, um, depending what we see on the ground for unthrashed, unthrashed grain. There, and we'll go to the back, our cleaning system, and now. Here's where a little history comes in. We'll clean this axle all up. So a little history with the machine. Um, what I like to do is uh, a lot of times I'll have a handful of grain and throw on here. But history of the machine, I know where I kind of want stuff set. Uh, if it was a new machine, I would tighten down a little bit. Um, but yeah, so it'll we'll uh, we'll kind of run run with them settings there and so how that chaffer works is air is coming up from the bottom so all this leaf stuff will literally get floated out the back this whole chaffer frame that's the one I rebuilt this thing just sits in here and moves like this and the grain will fall through this panel and all the debris and trash come out the back so I got him set where I like the fan the fan that does it is right behind down in that opening there that this belt drives and so but the big thing is our thrashing right now so let's just give it a check and see what happens a power shutdown is a great thing to do on the combine and it is what it sounds like we will we will literally just shut the combine off while combining at our normal pace and capacity and uh, we'll go look at the straw walkers See what we see on the straw walkers, take a look on the ground behind the combine, see what we see for field losses. Um, gotta remember, we're harvesting grain. Grain on the ground is money on the ground. Um, and so, you know, anybody can combine for themselves. That's great because there's nobody to judge you other than you. But when you combine for somebody else, oh boy, you do a bad job and the coffee shop crowd, they, they will eat that up and you will hear about it for a long time. And so you, you really gotta watch your P's and Q's when harvesting for other people as far as quality and cleanliness and uh, whatnot. And so we'll go ahead here and do a power shutdown. So we're cruising along, we're at our four miles an hour and I will reach over here and just shut her down. We just literally shut it off, put everything back to neutral and restart at an idle to uh, get oil to our turbo. And so let's go look at our straw walkers and see what we see. On the way around to the straw walkers, first thing I look at is our row units. So we're taking in corn on this row and there's a mountain of trash down here, but we're looking underneath the combine for corn on the ground. And it only takes a couple random kernels. And so here's a here's a stock that was laying really low and the ear the ear actually didn't even make it into the head um, and so there's a cluster of kernels there the next row over I can see just a couple random kernels which is about normal um, to see a, a half a bushel to a bushel loss on the corn head at this time of year is not out of the question it's not abnormal and then we come over to the back of the combine 
and we look we're looking kind of in the middle there's the comet everything's going to be coming out there so we've got a nice clean cob a broken cob with a couple kernels on it that you know if that's just one that's okay and a lot of whole cobs we're going to see broken cobs because of the chopper and so we see a lot of whole cobs but overall so here's a clean patch of dirt um, so we are looking in one square foot we are looking for uh, two to three kernels average for across the width of the machine um, and so here I can take my one foot and then I can just kind of make an imaginary one foot box and I see a half a kernel uh, we move over to the next spot you know we're I don't know there's a kernel somewhere there's a couple there you got three kernels um, so we're doing very well for not having kernels come out of the back of the combine the whole cobs are looking pretty nice we might have to tighten down the concave a little bit um, but we'll see you know and, and that, that's why we check for head loss first because out here I'm beside the combine and we've got kernels and so um, I'll show you on the head how that loss is happening but let's go look at the walkers so I'm up here at the rear of the combine and this is the walker area and there's steps they're basically steps that uh, so what we're looking for is so there's an unthreshed cob there's an unthreshed cob and they're all pretty much in whole pieces so we definitely got to tighten down that concave some maybe speed up the cylinder a little bit we can't be having we can't be having that that is just ridiculous um, the walkers you can kind of see that step there and then down there's the next layer and these walkers they move up and down like this and they'll throw the material and in that moment of time when all this fluff comes flying up the grain will fall faster and the grain will go down them holes into our clean grain system or back to our cleaning system and all this chaff goes out the end into our chopper and so this this power shutdown is priceless for the speed it can save and it's just a great tool so we can clearly see we got to do a better job on our thrashing so our head loss we get losses at the head because what's going on here is you got these chains that are pulling up and into the head and then there's these deck plates and what's going to happen is you can see the rolls underneath there them rolls will grab the corn stock and suck it down through and the ear itself bangs against these plates to get tore off the stock but we get a lot of what we call butt shelling see if I can get that husk off of that guy and so when that that hits at the speed it hits you get a couple kernels see they the kernels fling around and it's just these bottom kernels here some years you don't have that good of kernels around the butt and you don't have that much head loss but I'll gladly take the head loss so we can have that by adjusting these deck plates by slowing down the speed of the head and things like that but um, so that's kind of how the head is working and how we can get get and prevent losses and so there's adjustments there we maintain or keep an eye on so let's look at our tank so we come in here and we look at the grain tank and it is tremendously clean this looks like seed and uh, we go through and there's very little damage that's okay um, we, we will gladly live with that I like to I like to put my hand and churn it through and look for damages uh, right now it looks awesome and so we will just see if we can't tighten that concave up and get going and uh, so for the most part that's the basics and then between adjusting that concave clearance cylinder speed and the cleaning systems we can get them cobs cleaned up to get more kernels in the tank and uh, less on the ground and so that's kind of the basics of doing a good job of tuning the combine and kind of how how I do it when I enter a new field and so guys thank you for listening I hope I made this clear and easy to follow uh, if you're a non-farmer now you can go set your neighbor's combine and if you're a farmer maybe you've never had the 
the confidence to do a power shutdown, but there you go. Hope somebody got something out of this. Otherwise, I'm talking for nothing. Ha! I'm just kidding, guys. I always talk for nothing. All right, guys. Thank you for watching.